Hello everyone, it's me Uncle John. Today I'm going to read S5 55. Jenny B. Jones and the Yaki Black Ear Fruit Cake. Chapter 1 The Best Taste Game Winner. My name is Jenny B. Jones. The B stands for Beatrice, except I don't like Beatrice. It's just like B, and that's all. I mean, the grade of kindergarten, it's the afternoon time. Afternoon kindergarten is better than morning kindergarten. That's because you get to sleep late and watch cartoons. Only guess what? Today my baby brother named Ollie to wake me up very to Ollie. He was screaming for his bottle. But screaming is not polite. And so he needed some discipline, I think. I sat up in my bed. Hey, shut up your face, I hollered. Mother opened my door, speedy quick. Her eyes were angry at me. Juni B. Jones, what do you think you're doing? She got growled. I hide it from her under my sheet. I think I'm doing discipline, I said kind of quiet. Please, Juni B., not today, said mother. Daddy and I need you to be on your best behavior. Boss have to go to work early and Grandpa Miller is coming to babysit. Just then I heard the front door open. Grandpa, it's my grandpa, Frank Miller, I shouted. I jumped out of bed and ran to meet him. Only too bad for grandpa. Because he didn't see me coming around the corner, and I accidentally butted him in the stomach with my head. Grandpa Miller yelled a word of oomph, then he bended way over in half. Me and my mother and daddy had to help him walk to the couch. Daddy did a frown at me. How many times have we told you not to run in the house, he said. I counted on all my fingers. A million, trillion, scatterly, and I think only I'm just guessing. After that, mother made me sit on her lap, and she told the grandpa Frank Miller to babysit her instructions on me. Babysit her instructions is all the stuff I, I'm not allowed to do, like no climbing on top of the refrigerator, and no putting lipstick on my duck named the tickle, no making Ali lick a potato, except for he didn't actually mind it that much. After babysitter instructions, mother and daddy kissed me goodbye. Then they went to work. I jumped way high in the air. Oh boy. Oh boy. Now they're gone and so you and me can have fun, right, Grandpa? Right? I zoomed into the kitchen and climbed on top of the fridge. Hey, Grandpa, come look where I am. Grandpa Miller came in the kitchen. Look, look how high I'm up here. Now I can be the king, and this can be my throne, and you're my servant named the Pinky. And you have you have to fetch me stuff, and also I get to hit you on the head with my sword. Grandpa Miller lifted me off the fridge. He put me back on the floor. Yeah, only I didn't give you permission to do that, Pinky, I said. So did it to go, but you heard the rules, said Grandpa. Anyhow, I have to finish feeding Ollie his breakfast bottle. He went back into the living room. Hey, Grandpa, you just gave me a very great idea. Because I think I'll eat my breakfast too. Only I can fix mine all by myself. I hurried up and got out the, the, the ingredients. Uh, ingredients is the stuff you mix together, like the bowl and the spoon and the cereal <clears throat> and the milk. Except for the milk carton was very too heavy for me. And so I just got, a, got the orange juice instead. I put my bowl of cereal on the floor, then I poured orange juice to the tippy top of it. I took a giant bite. Yum, I said. This is the most delicious breakfast I ever ate. Except for it doesn't actually taste that good. Just then, Grandpa Miller came in the kitchen. He said no eating on the floor. Yeah, but I don't like to sit in my big kitchen chair. I said, because I'm not tall enough to reach the table. And so mother makes me sit on a telephone book. Only that thing hurts me, hurts my, the behind me. My grandpa looked in my bowl. What in the world are you eating? He asked. I'm eating cereal and orange juice. I told him, it's very delicious, except for it is going to make me puke, I think. Then grandpa Frank Miller opened the refrigerator so he could find me a better kind of breakfast. How about some fruit, he said. Yeah, I shouted, I asked for fruit, because fruit is the best thing I love. I folded my hands very polite. 
I'd like some bananas and some peaches and some strawberries, please. And so Grandpa sliced all those fruits into a bowl and he let me eat them in the living room in front of TV. Guess what? I'm not even allowed to do that. Only we are not telling mother. And here is another fun thing after breakfast. Baby Ollie took his nap. And me and my grandpa Miller played old maid. And I win him five whole times in a row. That's because I kept on putting the old maid way higher than the rest of my cask. And he kept on picking it. Grandpa Frank Miller is a sucker. I think. Me and him played lots more games too. The names are who can skip the fastest, who can hop on one foot the longest. Also the game of tic-tac-toes. And guess what? I win all of those games too. I'm the bestest game winner in the whole world, I said. Then I run to my room to get ready for kindergarten. First I put on my favorite pants with the polka dotties on them. Then I found my favorite sweater with the cow on the front. It was, the, it was in the dirty clothes hamper. Only it didn't even stink that much. After that, I, I combed my hair with my finger and I brushed my teeth. Except for not the wiggly one. <clears throat> Grandpa made me a sandwich for lunch. His name was Jack Cheese. I ate it all up and I gave him a big kiss and I skipped to my school bus very happy. I'm the bestest winner. I'm the bestest winner. I sang real loud because winning is the funniest thing. Funniest thing I love. Chapter 2, Hopping and Racing and tic tac toad I ride the school bus with my bestest friend named Grace. She has curly black hair. That's my favorite kind of hair. Also, she, she has pink high tops with big feet in them. The Grace is a lucky duck, I think. Hey Grace, guess what? Me and my grandpa Frank Miller played the games today and I win them all at Old Maid, at hopping and skipping and tic tac toe. And so I'm the bestest game winner in the whole world. They Grace my me too, she said. I'm a good game winner too. I patted her very nice. Yeah, only you can be as good as me, Grace. Because I said it first, that's why. The Grace did a mad face at me then. She called me the name of Beanie Head. I patted again. You don't take criticism that well, Grace, I said. Just then she got out a pencil and paper from her backpack. She drew a tic-tac-toe. Now we'll see who the bestest winner really is, she said. I got axes, I hollered. I got O, she hollered. I go first, I hollered. I go second, she hollered. Then me and her played the tic-tac-toe, tic-tac-toe, three in a row. I yelled very fast, see, Grace, see, I told you I'm the bestest winner. The Grace looked at the paper, but your ex is on in a row, Judy B. I did a huffy breath at her. I know they're not in a row, Grace. That's why I made a curvy line to connect them. The Grace jumped up. Cheater, cheater, that's cheating, she shouted. The axes have to be in a straight low. She passed out tic-tac-toes all around the bus. All the other kids called me cheater too. Plus, a mean boy named Jim called me the name of Nutball. I hate that guy. After that, I scooted way over neck to the window all by myself. I should have took oaths. I whispered, very disappointed. Pretty soon, the bus pulled into my school parking lot. I heard it off that thing's speedy kick. Hey, Jenny B, wait up, yelled that Grace. You and me can skip to the swing. Sat together, wanna? And so all of a sudden, I felt happy inside again because skipping is my bestest game. I could crimmer at that, I think. Hey, Grace, I holler. You and me can have a skipping race. The first one to the swings is the winter. I took a big breath. Ready, get, set, go. I shouted, except for that Grace wasn't actually off the bus yet. Only that's not my problem. I skipped as fast as a speeding rocket. I'm winning, I'm winning, I shouted Betty through, but just then the Grace skipped right past me. Hi, Junibi, bye, Junibi, she said, then she touched the swing set before I did. I won, I won, she yelled. I beat you at skipping. I told you I was a good game winner. I stamped my foot at her. 
No, you're not a good game winner, Grace, I said, because you feel awake, child, than mine. And also, you have pink high tops, so this way was not fair and square. The Grace, too, stuck a tongue out at me. That's not attractive of you, madam, I said. Then I turned around and saw my other bestest friend named Lucio. I don't to her spirit key. Hey, Lucio, it's me. It's your bestest friend, Jenny B. Jones. Let's not play with that grace, okay? Let's just play by ourselves. But you and me can have a hopping contest, and we can see who the hop best is hopper. Lucille flopped her lacy dress. Okay, but I'm not allowed to get sweaty. And also, I must be careful of my fingernail. She showed them to me. See, the manicure lady painted them apricot eyes. See how beauteous they are? Yeah, yeah, whatever. I said that looking. I took a giant breath. Ready, get set, go! I shouted. And me and Lucille started hopping on one foot. We hopped and hopped and hopped. Once it wasn't as fun as hopping with the Grandpa Miller, on account of Lucille, didn't get tired and fall over. Look, Jenny B. said very squilly. Look how bouncy I am. This is fun, isn't it? I wiped my sweating head. Eh, only it would be funny if you tell over, if you fell over now, Lucille, because I just had a skipping contest with that grace. And I'm a little uh, pooped here. Look, Jenny B, she said again. Look how my fluffy skirt bounces over my head. When I hopped way high, my face felt hardish and reddish. I can see your underpants, Lucille, I told her. Only that dumb Lucille didn't even care if I could see her underpants. Just kept on hopping and hopping. Finally, I got tired and fell over. Yeah, yeah, shouted to see I'm the winner. I'm the winner of hopping. Just then the school bell rang. And everybody ran to room nine, except for not me. I walked very slow all by myself. Mrs. was standing outside room nine. Mrs. is the name of my teacher. She has another name too, but I just like Mrs. and that's all. She smiled at me. Why so glum today, Juni B? She asked, because people keep on beating me at all my game, that's why. And so now I'm not the bestest winner anymore, I said. Then I went to my seat and I put my head down on my table. And a kind of glum is when the happy is, is gone right out of you. Chapter 3, all about the carnival. Mrs. took attendance. Attendance is when you say the word here, only I didn't feel like saying it. So I just raised my hand, very flimsy. Are you feeling all right, Jenny B? Mrs. says, she's okay, so she's just mad because I beat her at hopping. Yeah, only I already explained that to you, madame. I shouted at Lucille's face. Mrs. clapped her hand, clapped the loud hands at me. Jenny B. Joe, that'd be enough of that, she said. I put my head on my table again. This day is a bummer. I whispered to just myself. Mrs. stood up at her desk. Boys and girls, may I have your attention, please? I like to take, I like to talk to you about a special night coming up at school on Friday. It's called Carnival Night. Does anyone know what a carnival is? I do, I do. Said so that Jim. I hate carnival is like what they have at the state fair every year. There are lots of rides there, like the Ferris wheel, the tilt the wheel, and the bumper cars. Yeah. And there's a shooting gallery with fake dogs, said Jamar Hall. And there's cotton candy that, that Roger tastes by eating big black holes in your, the protective tooth animal that a boy I love named Ricardo. Ricardo's mother is a dentist, I think. After that, a crybaby, crybaby boy named William stood up, very shy, and he said one time, he rode a scary roller coaster and he didn't even cry that much except for he accidentally threw up his chili dog. Then Polly Allen Puffer told about kind of a food that he threw up too. Oh, like a candy apple and caramel popcorn and a rubber band. Except for that is not food. That is, uh, that is off his supplies. I raised my hand. Carnivals are a rip ups, I said. Because one time my daddy kept on trying to knock over three bottles with a ball, but even when he hit them, they would fall down. So then he and mother had to call the cops. And also I went this news at six and 10. Mrs. laughed out loud. Yeah, only that's not a laughing matter, I told her. She stopped smiling. No, of course it isn't, she said, but I promise that nothing like that'll ha 
happen at our school's carnival night, Genevieve. All the games are going to be run by the parents and teachers. There will be hundreds of prizes to win. I set up a little bit straighter. Hundreds? I said hundreds, she said. Yeah, only I don't even know how to win them, I said. And so Mrs. got out a piece of paper. They told all about the carnival game. Well, let's see. She said, she said there will be fishing booths, a penny toss, moonwalk tent, a pudding green, putting green, clothes pins in the bottle, a basketball shoe, ring toss, and a booth where you can throw wet sponges at a principal's face. So then room nine started laughing very much because throwing sponges at principal is a dream come true. That's why. They also say, it also said that Mr. So, the art teacher, will be painting faces in the art room. In our very own room nine, there is going to be a cake walk. I jumped right out of my chair. Hey, guess what? Walking on cake is the funniest thing I love. Because one time at a picnic, I, start, I stepped on my grandpa's little Debbie snack cake with a bare feet. And the creamy feeling was barely squishing between my toes. Goonie shouted out that Jim I hate. Goonie Bird Jones. You don't walk on cake. Cake walk is a game where you win a cake. Right, teacher, right? Mrs. made the squinting eyes at him. Yes, Jim, but we do not call people goonie birds. Calling people names is rude. Plus, if you want to make a comment, I would appreciate it if you would politely raise your hand. Like me, right, Mrs. I hollered out. So I raised my hand, very polite, when I told you that carnivals were rip-ups. Remember that? Then a lot of other kids shouted, shouted that they were very polite too. So I had to stand up on my chair so Mrs. could hear me. Yeah, only they can be as polite as me, right, Mrs. Because I said it first, right, right. And Mrs. rubbed the head for a very long time. And also she took some aspirin. Chapter four, very practicing. After school, I run all the way home from my bus stop. That's because Grandma Miller babysits me in the afternoon and I wanted to tell her all about Carnival Night. Hey, Grandpa Miller, it's me, it's Junie B. Jones. Your grand girl, I've got some important news for you. There's gonna be a carnival at my school. I can win a hundred prizes at that thing, Grandpa Miller. Hurried out of baby old Ollie's room. She looked grumpily at me. Shh, Junie B., not so loud. I just put the baby down for his nap. My shoulders got very slumping. Yeah, only I'm excited down here, Helen, I said. Then Grandma smiled at a little bit. She hugged me hello, and she said not to call her Helen. Yeah, only I didn't even tell you the baddest part yet. I said, because Mrs. Uh, read me the kind of game they're going to play, and so now I can practice them at home. I'll be the bestest game winner of anyone. I hurried to the laundry room to get the clothes pins. They're gonna have a game where you drop clothes pins in a bottle. I hollered to Grandma, except for I can find the bottle in this whole big laundry room. So I'm just gonna drop these clothes pins in a bucket. Cause that'll give me the feel of it, I think. I got the bucket away from the mop. Then I dropped all of my clothes pins right in that thing. Hey, Grandma, I did it, I did it. I dropped every single clothes pin in this big bucket and I didn't even miss one of them. I'm a breeze at this game. I ran back to her. Now I need some pennies to practice the penny toss, I said. And so the Grandpa Miller, Grandma Miller, gave me all her pennies and I ran back and threw those guys in the bucket too. Here's another fun thing. When Mother came home from work, she showed me how to put, how to putt with a real actual golf club. Only no golf balls in the house. So I just putted a, a grapefruit and also a dinner roll. And guess what? That night at dinner, I didn't even growl about sitting on the telephone booth because everything was going my way. That's why. After we ate, mother and daddy, they cleaned up the dishes together. They weren't even paying attention to me. That's how come I snicked into the bathroom to practice another game. Its name is throwing sponges at principal. I got the sponge from under the sink. Then I made it soaky wet with water. Ready, aim, fire, I said. Then I throw the sponge with all my might. <clears throat> it splashed it right in the middle of the toilet pot. Bullseye. I made a bullseye. I hollered real excited. Only just then I heard a knock at the door. Judy B, what are you doing in there? Open the door. Oh, no, it was mother. I was in big trouble, I think. I was in big trouble, I think. 
ma her ka peri pumping on account of i'm not allowed uh on account of i'm not all uh i'm not actually allowed to play in the toilet so i quickly uh, kick flush the sponge down the bar only too bad for me because that dumb thing got stuck in the hole and the water captain getting higher and higher and then it runs right over the top mother bang the harder i said open the door i did a gulp yeah, only it's a little bit splash in here right now. I explained kind of quiet, but unlocked the door with the key. I smiled very pleasant. Hello, how are you today? I said. Mother hollered the name of Robert. Robert is my daddy, except for sometimes he's Bob. He came running in there. Well, good night, folks, I said. Then I tried to sneak out up there, but mother held on to my shirt. And so even when I kept on walking, I kept on staying. <laughs> she, she made me help her. Help her and daddy dry up the water with towel. After that, I had to take a bath. Only I don't know why, because I was already wet from the toilet. After my bath, mother tucked me into bed. Me and her had a little talk. Look, Jenny B, daddy and I know you're excited about the carnival. And we also know you're having fun practicing the game. But you're worrying too much about winning. Nobody can win all of the time. Right, she said. Right, I said. And besides... The fun of school carnival isn't whether you win or lose. The fun of school carnival is just playing the games in the first place, right? Right. So we'll so we'll go to carnival night on Friday and we'll have a great time. And we won't worry if we don't win any prizes at all, right? Right. Mother kissed me good night. See you in the morning, she said right. After she closed my door, I waited for her, fed to walk away. Then I quick took out my flashlight from under my pillow. I shined it all around my room. Also, I shined it on my dresser. I shined it on my toy box. Then I shined it on the brand new bookshelf Daddy made me. I smiled and smiled. That's where I'm going to put them. I whispered to just myself. That's where I'm going to put my hundred prizes. The end.